Okay, folks, over my morning breakfast, I happened to look on page 48 of Newsday, and I read about the hero worship. And boy, was I impressed with what Ryan Mead has done with Capo Caco. So what I did is I went to my computer, and I immediately sent Ryan a Facebook request. Luckily, he must have been on. He accepted immediately and agreed to come to tonight's show. I did. So, Ryan, thank you so much for coming. And I mean, I gotta ask. I mean, it's been a long time. You and I have known each other for years, obviously. Yeah. Um, and it's something I've been meaning to ask you: is uh, how are we doing? We're doing great. great. We're doing fantastic. Great. <laughs> we're, do, we're doing great. And um, how are we doing? We're doing fantastic. So let's talk. About, let's go to the beginning. Yeah. And then we'll build up to this. Mm -hmm. When did you become a diehard Ranger fan? When was the passion ignited yeah, yeah, sure. for Ryan so, Mead? I was five years old, obviously, at that time. Uh, the Rangers were pretty good. They won the Stanley Cup at that point. And I remember watching Game 7 versus the Devils and just being totally in love. I had a Brian Leach poster. Mark Messier is one of my heroes. And we've, you know, we've come a long way, and uh, I've always been a diehard Ranger fan. Took a little break in high school, fell in love with baseball, but I came back around 2011, 2012. All right, so that that is awesome. You know, uh, I grew up in Boston, so I know what it's like to be a diehard sports fan. Of course fan. you do. I'm so sorry about all your championships. It's been really hard for you. Yeah, it, it really has been tough. It has been tough. We haven't had a parade in like six months. It's been, yeah. I mean, yeah. to lose in the finals like that, wow, got to be heartbreaking. Yeah, a a absolutely. Especially because... If the Bruins had won, we could have brought the cup to right here in Long Beach with Charlie McAvoy. Uh, but you know, you gotta give the Blues credit. They they kicked their butts in games. Listen, seven. I just I'm here to feel bad for you. That's all I'm here for. Alright, sounds great. Uh, let's talk about Blue Shirts Breakaway. Sure, you mean the number one New York Rangers podcast that you can find on SoundCloud and SoundCloud and iTunes? Absolutely! Well, what how, do I know about how'd you start it? How'd it, how'd it get off the ground? Because it sounds like you've got quite a range of following on that. Yeah, that's true. Um, we do have quite the following. We, like I said, we are the number one podcast for the New York Rangers. Uh, I, in 2015, decided that there was no good Ranger podcast out there. Um, I was a big podcast guy ever since they really started in 2006, and I went up and found there was nothing there. So I thought, what better way than to fill the void uh, with the New York Rangers podcast produced and done by me? And my co-host, Greg Kaplan, and that's what we do every single week, every Tuesday for four years now. That is awesome. Now, how did you come up with the idea of the Church of Capo uh, with this new Ranger? He was the second pick in the entire draft, Capo Caco from Finland. That is, I, I have to say, it's absolutely brilliant. I love people that are creative. How did that whole thing come about? Well, you know, uh, I was in a deep slumber, and Caco... You know, came to me in a dream before we got the second overall. No, man. I um, I, I just thought what would be you know sort of fun to rally the fans around, and I came up with this idea of the uh, Church of Chicago, of some sort of act, like, worshiping him like a religious figure, and like he's the Lord and Savior, and uh, praise be to him. And we we we've come a long way with the Church of Chicago. It's gotten really big, and um, I'm really proud of what we've done. It's huge. Talk about the fact that not only has it got big right. in the United States. But you, it's all the way in Finland. There are yeah. media outlets in Finland that, that found out about this because Kapo Kaka was like a, a, a god in Finland. Right. So it's, it's all over the world now, this idea. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, my Tinder bio literally reads, I'm big in Finland. And uh, we've gotten eight or nine newspapers in Finland to write about it. Now, I've been bullying other Rangers blogs because no one would write about Church of Kako, but yet Finland would write about it constantly. Um, and then Newsday ended up taking the story, which was, you know, a, a great surprise for me, an, an amazing turn of events. Being big in Finland is quite weird. You get a lot of messages from people. Uh, we sold a lot of merch to Finland. It's 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 sort of an honor. I might go over and... Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, you should no. definitely go to Finland. And, uh, I think you'd be and, treated and like Howie, a I want to thank you so much for sponsoring my flight over to Finland. Uh, it's, it's my, and, my and pleasure. So, and it's so great that you would do that. Oh, uh, absolutely. For inviting me out here today. Uh, absolutely. And I think it's really cool that you got to meet the Phenom. Talk about meeting Kapo Kaka. Sure. How yeah. was that? Yeah, I can talk a lot, a lot about this. So that was at a private prospect event. For season ticket holders only. I am not a season ticket holder. Uh, a dear friend of mine, Dan, contacted me and said, do you want to go to the event? I said, absolutely, he's going to be there. I kept it in my backpack, uh, all my gear, and uh, I was waiting online to meet him, and he like kind of looked over and saw me, and he knew. Because the Finland newspapers keep asking him about it, and be like, uh, pretty much telling him, hey, do you, have you gone to church or anything like that? And he usually says, no, I haven't, but who else has a church? Not, no one else, so. A absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 
Talk about how this whole concept is blown up on, on Twitter and all over the place. Has it blown up to like, you can't even believe how big this has become now? I, I wanna say I can't believe it, but like when I had the idea, I was like, man, this is good. And uh, I, I will say I am surprised because if you go to any picture of Capacaco or any story about Capacaco, there will be a couple people below it saying praise be. Um, and it's really like, uh, I'm very flattered by it. I'm glad that people joined the movement. And uh, I'm not really surprised how big it is, if I'm being honest. <laughs> and what's really cool is this, this is 18 year old kid right. who everyone says is going to be a superstar. Yeah. It's going to be the future of the New York Rangers. So you're getting in on the ground floor. And I, I can see the when he scores in the garden, that chant, praise be. Yeah. And, and it's all started by you. So the I mean, goal, the goal it's chant, amazing. The praise be goal chant is something I'm really working very hard on. I mean, we're going to be doing a, a service, quote unquote, service outside of MSG on opening night. Um, I'll be handing out prayer cards and, uh, and things to say. So it'll be pretty fun. Uh, I'm going to be in this costume. I'll probably get arrested. So it'll be nice. You know, I'll call you from jail. Absolutely. You know, we're in Long Beach uh, here, Long Beach Island Park, Oceanside. Right. This is huge Ranger country. Yes. Um, I feel the Rangers are going to be one of the most improved teams in 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 hockey next year. They yes. made some amazing. They signed the best free agent on the market. They got a great yes. defenseman yes. in Capo. So yes. talk about. Am I realistic when I say the Rangers should be a playoff team this yes. coming season? Yeah, Hadley, thanks for asking. You are uh, being realistic about this. Uh, the thing about the Rangers, though, is there's still a lot of building to do. Yes, the rebuild is over, but now what they would say is the build is on. Yeah, they signed Jacob Truba to a long-term deal, seven years. They signed, obviously, Artemi Panarin to seven years and a lot of money. Um, he's now the highest-paid winger in the league. They know, and the president of the, of the New York Rangers, John Davidson, and Jeff Gordon, no, this is a long-term thing. This is about winning a cup. So it's not really about making the playoffs next year where it's about winning a cup in the next six. And this is a really good start for that. I think we will push playoff contention, but I'm not sure we'll get there. The other thing too is, I, I gotta believe when something like this happens, mm -hmm. you come up with an amazing idea, Church of Kako, right. it changes your life. You become like, well, no. has it changed your life a little bit? Or, or what, well, what's it been like? Dealing with all the excitement, you know, people in Finland love it. People, Ranger fans are crazy about it. What, what's it been like dealing with? You know, it's a great idea that just took uh, off. I, what's I, it been like? No, you know what? I, I'm really lucky to have a lot of great friends that keep me humble and call me an idiot. And, okay. Um, we've done. Yeah, it's been it's been it's gotten really big. But I want to be honest. Like, I'm not like really excited about it. Like, I. I just on to the next. So you're race. even keel. Yeah, that's kind of always am. Okay, like, just, all right. I'm like, this is so great. You're and I'm gonna run with it. Um, we're gonna, like I said, we're doing a sermon outside MSG on October third. Don't get me arrested. And uh, it's gonna be great and all that. But we're always on to the next idea. Like last week, we had Mark Messier talk about our podcast, which was great. Um, and we're always on to doing what? Well, what can we do next? It's always looking forward. A absolutely, it's great. And what, what's today been like? I mean, you know, I it's not every day that you know your picture is splashed all over Newsday, a page and a half story. Uh, now you're on the halftime Howie show. Right. Like, what has what what today been like for Ryan Me? Well, honestly, the biggest part of today is right now. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't deny it. Like, the halftime Howie show, like, what an honor. And uh, I, I went out and bought five newspapers for the first time in my life. Okay. Which I thought was, a, a, you know, like, is this what it was like? Wow, before the internet? That was crazy. I, that was a real eye-opening experience, like buying and touching print. Just a crazy moment for me. Um, you know, I woke up, I went to the gym, and I ate breakfast. And boy, all those things were great. So um, it's been an exciting day, but uh, I got some calls, uh, some text messages and saying thank you. Obviously, they're like, this is crazy. Um, and it is. It is crazy. Um, but, you know, just, just looking forward still. Yeah. All right. Great. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to put you on the spot. Well, I've never been on the spot before, so this is the first right. time for me. I'm going to give you, give me a prediction okay. of how many goals and assists Capo Caco is going to have this rookie year. I'll tell you even better than that. I'll, All give, right. you, I'll give you a point total. All right, go for it. 69. Nice. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll do even better. You okay. ready? Yeah, I'm ready for you. I'm going to say 90, and he's going to be the unanimous rookie of the year. Okay. So, yeah, that's called the unrealistic. And even though he is the deity and the Lord and Savior, um, you know, Jesus needed time to grow too, and so does Capo Caco. All right, but I will, can I give you a little, uh, a little uh, preview about sometimes um, I'm a little, um, I get a little excited because yeah. I, lo I love to see. Howie, I never knew that about you. All right, get there you excited? go. I love to see a new guy 
come onto the scene right. and go crazy. So yeah. it was a week before the season started, the Mets season. I'm, and I was and sitting, the season's over. And now, but wait a second. And I was sitting with my, my son and my son-in-law, who are diehard Mets fans. Yep. Sorry. And I said to you, I guarantee Peter Alonso is going to hit over 30 home runs this year. Okay. They looked at me and they said, you crap. How do you know? He's never played in the major leagues. Before. I said, well, the way this kid is hit in the minors, he's just a, a star. He's made for New York. And as we speak now, I think he has 34 home runs, and we're not even in August. Hey, well, okay, I so think the same thing is going to happen with how, how deep do you want to go here in baseball conversation? Because you're actually talking to somebody that's pretty knowledgeable about baseball, which okay. is unfortunate for you. Okay. Now, in this situation, like, yes, P. Alonso hit like 31 home runs in his AAA debut, but mm -hmm. the launch angle and also the juicing of the baseballs really contributes to who, how good P. Alonso is. Now, if they fix the launch angle, the, well, the launch angle um, kind of trend is already available for the, for the baseball players, but... Um, if they fix the juice baseball next year, Pete Alonso might not hit 30 run runs again. Okay. So, yes, he's a great overall player. Yes, he's a phenom. Yes, he's the best part of the New York Mets. And yes, you absolutely called that, Howie, and all credit to you, and no one else did that. Um, but the, uh, for Kapokaka to score 90 points is literally um, almost unfathomable. If he does it, like, I'll come back here and do this like without all right. How about this? I will bet a state to dinner. A state Flight dinner. To Finland. How about a, a fun state dinner that <laughs> 90 points or more, I get a steak. Nine, uh, 89 points or less, you get a steak. Done. Done deal. I'll All shake right. on that right now. All right. Great there job. We go. Great job. I love steak. All right. There you go. So <laughs> uh, now, I, you know, and he seems like a real likable kid that you want to root for. Really humble. Really humble. Um, just knows what's going on. Is definitely a pro. Uh, even at 18, you could tell that he's been through the media ringer. He's, he's available and ready to go. And, and you know what? Um, something I read about him. Mm -hmm. I think has made him uh, more mature at a young age, and that is his health condition that he's had to deal with right. from a young age. And I, and I think because of that, it's made him a lot more mature. Let's talk about that sure. aspect. Sure, so I mean, like, having celiac obviously is a really hard disease to deal with, especially when you love food. Uh, that's like a nightmare for me. Um, but for Capo to deal with not only diabetes and also celiac disease throughout his whole life, obviously, you know, shows that he has a lot of different disciplines that he has to take care of. He has a lot of routines that he has to stay in. I'm not going to go ahead and make that jump an assessment for him. I don't know the guy personally. I just but worship just saying him on that as a young person to yes. deal with that, you have to be disciplined. Of course, yeah. It forces you to have a routine. A absolutely. A absolutely. And, um, and I think, I love the way he said on draft day, something to the effect that the devils are going to regret not taking him number one. I love that. I love that. Attitude I mean, of you, you know what we always say at Church Chicago, which is stay away from the devil. There you go. Right. There you go. Of course, you're you're well aware of that. So a absolutely. <laughs> so um, this has been, you know, I really want to thank you because you live in Bay Shore. It's right around the corner. Um, you get this maniac that contacted you today. Right. You, you never met before on Facebook. Second and, most viral thing out of Bay Shore the last month. And me. and there you go. And you're here today. Uh, on the interview with short notice. Um, I love the outfit. I love the idea. Thank you. And I think it's awesome. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you for and I can't wait for Capo Caco to be Rookie of the Year. And uh, and I can't wait to keep uh, following on your podcast. You're creative. You're innovative. Uh, and uh, this is a, just a brilliant idea. So thank you so much. Thank you. Ryan Mead. Thank you, Howie. All right. Here we go. All right.